It is really, really easy to attend church, get your check mark, go home, done. Feel better about yourself. But be a receiver this morning. Now, I cannot cover everything about the subject I'm going to talk about this this morning. It's not going to be all the truth, everything that there is to know about the truth, the end of the story, the summation of all life this morning, okay? It's not going to be. I'm going to hit some highlights of something that I think is tremendously important. Don't feel left out. Don't feel like I missed some of the biggest points or anything like that. When you hear that big point that I didn't talk about, keep it. It's for you. Okay? Keep it. Don't let it go. Remember it. Write it down. You're here in the Holy Spirit. Okay? Because I'm going to touch on some subjects and I'm only going to get started. I'm believing for the Holy Spirit to take it and show it to you. Does that make sense? And so you go home with what the Holy Spirit says to you and you can say, praise God, Pastor Rob just sparked something and then the Holy Spirit took over. I mean, truth of the matter is, is he's going to do it all. Okay? But y'all hear me, what, what I'm saying is? Because when I, when I start talking about the subject, you will notice that I'm making some overgeneralizations and I'm not talking about everything that there is. And that's okay. Because what we're going to do is find Jesus. <laughs> Can, let's get a close-up on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> y'all, we're just family. We can just relax. All right. You know what, just to make, make it extra weird this morning, don't stand up, stay in your seat, hold your Bibles up in there. <laughs> go. Praise God. Say with me, this is my Bible. And I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. And I have what it says I have. This morning I'm going to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I plant it in my heart. God is raising it up. And I will reap a harvest for my life, for my family, for my church, for my country, and for my world, for the kingdom of God. Amen. Please turn this morning to chapter, John chapter 14 and verse 16. John chapter 14 and verse 16. And Jesus said to his disciples, And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Your identity in Christ Jesus is tremendously important. Many of you have been learning about that. And if you want to know more about who you are in Him, you need to come Wednesday nights and hear Joe Chris, Pastor Joe Chris. You need to come on Wednesday nights and afford yourself the opportunity. You know, um, if you knew that doing that something that simple would change the rest of your life, you would come. The reason why it's often hard to come, it's not the only reason, but one of the reasons is it's often hard to come on Wednesday nights. You don't really believe you're going to get very much. It's not, it's not because it's a little inconvenient. No. If you knew that Pastor Joe Chris was handing out $1,000 bills, I don't know if they make those, but $100 bills, you know. <laughs> if you knew he was just handing out money, whoa, that, that's... I, I, I can do that. I can be here, <laughs> you know, because it would be important enough over everything else. Yeah. Now, I want you to know I'm not talking about law here. I'm not talking about, you know, being under condemnation. I'm not. But what I am saying is, is that for each and every one of us, making a choice to hear God's word and allowing it to change the inside of us, if we think that's just attending a service so you can get a ticky mark. Like, you know, I, I grew up Catholic and the, I had to go to church every week. And so it was really important to me at one time in my life to make sure. And that was the coolest thing. Now get this mindset, you know. And it's just because I didn't know. I wasn't being evil. 
But man, when I found out that you could go to Saturday night mass and, and get to miss Sunday, I thought that was the coolest yeah. thing. And one of the days I woke up and I went, well, I usually have more fun on Saturday night than I do on Sunday. That sounds kind of weird that I would think it was that cool. You know, you know maybe that's not making sense to you. But I was thinking, wow, in my religious mindset, I, I, I wanted some way to get out of. But I had never approached church from the standpoint of, wow, I could actually go and get something in me that will change the rest of my life. But one day after I got saved, something else happened. There was a day I woke up when I went to church and I realized, wow, there are people at church whose lives will be changed because I came. And all of a sudden coming to church took on a whole new meaning. And I, I was not in any type of leadership position, really. I mean, I just pl played piano and the, and the worship team was the only thing I did. The rest of the time I just sat down. But there was something about coming to church and realizing, wow, somebody's life is going to be different today because I came. And God started showing me, how about praying for them before you come so that when you show up, I remember walking into church going, I wonder who it is this morning, Father. You showed me that you were going to really bless somebody today and I don't even know what I'm supposed to do, but I'm already looking for them because I already know what's going to happen. And all of a sudden coming to church didn't come about what do I need? It became, wow, God wanted to do something in me. And then all this stuff started happening about, okay, it's time for you to preach. And I'm thinking, the poor people that are going to listen to me. Because I thought I'd be okay at first. But listen to me. This is important. This is not, not just trivial. I thought, how am I ever going to get fed if I'm always the one teaching? I'm going to dry up. And then after I dry up, all of y'all are going to dry up. And then we're going to all be in trouble. And it's all going to be my fault. I am not doing that. <laughs> and so it was a little bit scary. Except that how many school teachers or teachers of any kind do we have here this morning that have found out that when you start teaching, you learn more than you ever learned listening. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that yeah. freaky how that happens? Yeah. All, of a, all of a sudden, yeah. is your arm this way or this way? <laughs> you know, I could get by when I was watching. But when someone asks you and you're teaching, then all of a sudden you start realizing, well, I've got to learn more. Yeah. And all of a sudden, coming to church became life. Yes. Because it, it was either feeding me which it seemed like it always was, or it was feeding others. And then I started realizing, well, to come and feed somebody at church, I need to have something in me. And so I started spending a lot of time listening to the Word. And for a musician, I probably listen to music less than anyone I know. Just because I reached a point where I love music. And I love music. And sometimes when I'm listening to it, I have a great time. But most of the time, I know what I need is the Word of God. And it might not be you, but I don't think I'm the only person here that would really like my life and my family's life and my church's life to be doing a lot better. I praise God for what we have. I'm grateful for what we have. But I really want things to get better. How about you? And I've started to learn over the last number of years that it has way much more to what, what do I believe, what am I able to receive, than what am I able to do. Because I tried the whole do thing as hard as I could do. And got some success and got really tired. But one day I woke up and said, I want more than what I can do. I want to find out what Jesus has yes. done for me and learn to flow with Him yes. rather than trying to just please Him. Is that making sense? Yes. Well, this scripture that I just read a few minutes ago said that you will know him for he dwells with you, but and he will be in you. Now, I'm going to give a message this morning that's going to make a whole lot of assumptions. The first assumption is, really, is that you're born again. It's okay if I make that this morning for a moment, this service. The second thing I'm going to assume is that you've begun to realize how much Jesus loves you and is not mad at you anymore and is excited about you enjoying life and having good things. 
Can I make that assumption? Can, can, e- even if it's just starting, can we make that assumption this morning? We're there. Can we assume this morning you kind of got a revelation that unmerited favor, grace, is something that He wants to give you? Amen. When, when you just totally mess up, when you try really, really hard and get a B plus, no matter what, His grace is always there. No matter where you are. Amen? Can I make an assumption that you've learned a little bit about how to receive grace? Now we're just learning. We're just really getting started. But it's beginning to change the, our insights. Can I make that assumption this morning? Based on those assumptions, I want to get you out of yourself and come with me someplace different now. Okay. Now, are we ever going to get away from how much he loves us? No. Are we ever going to get away from his grace, favor towards us? No. But could it be he wants to live through us and use us to change other people's lives? Is he going to give us grace so we can go help them in the natural? Or is he going to give us grace so that we can impart grace to others? But we can only give what we've received. If you get out there and do what I've done a whole lot, which is give what you got, sort of like in the natural, you can really, really bless people, but you can't sustain it. And it's never enough, you know. And there are times when you want to help somebody bad, but you have no idea what to do. There's no way for you to fix it. But what if we started believing that he can? Now, if we start believing he can fix our problems, would it be possible that we could see ourselves in this next situation I'm going to give you? Turn to Matthew chapter 8 in verse one. Can I see a hand from somebody who would let me use you for a moment? I'm going to pick you, Brian, just because you're looking at me. <laughs> when Brian came down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, see that you tell no one, but go your way and show yourself to the priests. And offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. You all remember that... In the law, if you were around a dead body, you became unclean. If you were around a leper, you became unclean. Isn't that the law? What is Jesus showing different about grace? Grace shows up now in the person of Jesus, touches a leper... And the unclean becomes clean. Jesus is different. (laughs) Right? Right? (laughs) There's something powerful about him that all of a sudden, you know, if you were trying to measure the law, you would say, Jesus, you're now unclean. You've got to go do a ceremonial wash. Spend the next seven days getting all cleaned up. But what actually happened was the leper got healed. Now, fast forward real fast. Who lives in you? Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, lives in you. He's in me. He's in you. When you show up to a messed up, dirty, unclean world situation, what do you bring to that? I want you to consider bringing by faith through the power of grace bring cleanness to it. 
have on the inside of you the vision the moment I show up at that place, in that situation. When I show up, things are start getting clean. Amen. And I'm not talking about going and living in the bars and lying to yourself that the reason you're there is to make it all clean. You know, you're just deceived. That's not what I'm talking about. But every last one of you experience all the time at work, at home, all kinds of places. Bunch of mess is going on and the religious world goes, Ew! and runs away or condemns them. And I'm asking for something totally different. I'm asking you to be a grown-up. I'm asking you to be a man or a woman of God that says, Yes, I see all the mess up, but God's grace is bigger than all that junk. Yes. And I can walk right in the middle of people really messing up and love on them and not eat it with them. You know, I can love on them and bring Jesus right into that situation. Can you tell? This is actually a compliment to you guys. This is, this congregation has grown up a bit in grace and can hear a message like this. Because there are lots and lots of people that are so hurt and so hurting that they just need to receive. And that is okay. Amen. But y'all are not there. We're always in need of Him. We're always going to be in need of Him. Yes? Amen. But we can grow up, can't we? And we can grow up where we realize I need His grace every day. But it can be more than just about me. I can reach a point where one day I can realize, wow, He wants to live through me. And if I'll just let Him live through me, people's, other people's lives can be changed with the grace, the love that changed me. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. Now that's more grown up. It's less selfish. It's more dying to yourself. And I even told Tony this this week. Yesterday, probably. There are times when that feels like work. It's not always easy to walk in grace to your flesh. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. Your flesh can scream sometimes. This is a little bit more grown up. Y'all yes. with me? But the rest is in knowing I got to let him do it. See, the toil is in... I'm going to fix it. The rest is believing he's going to fix it. The rest is if he's going to fix it, the only part I need to do is whatever he's asking me to do. Does that make sense? Yep. You know, sometimes that means just love on him and shut up. You know, sometimes it means protect him. You know, even like with kids, sometimes I, lo I love you and I want to walk in grace, but I'm not going to let you do certain things because I don't want you to get hurt. You know, yeah. it's, it's OK for, for, for love to protect like that. This has never been do anything you want kind of gospel. I don't mean it like that at all. But the reality of it's a work to be a parent. Anybody notice? <laughs> <laughs> but when you make it about your work. You can really get burned out and feel overwhelmed. When you hear the news that it's all about him, you can start healing on the inside. But you can grow up to a point where you start to realize now. What was it the Apostle Paul said? You might be able to help me with this. Don't use this freedom for an opportunity for sin and laziness and all that, man. That's not what this is about. Take that liberty that you've been given and let God flow through you. You might have to die to your flesh a little bit. Y'all did this morning. Every last one of you. Died to your flesh. Because it would have been a lot easier to sleep. Do y'all ever notice? Have you ever thought about that I would like to? <laughs> this would have been a great morning. I'm telling you. <laughs> but there's something on the inside that says, you're worth it. My kids are worth it. My loved ones are worth it. For me to die to my flesh a little bit and let Jesus flow through me. I'm not talking about toil right now. I'm talking about just letting my flesh, just, you're not going to be the boss of me. And I'm going to let grace have its perfect work in me and let his life shine. So there might be somebody come to church today. Today is the day their life was never, ever, ever the same. Ever. 
You know, there are people in here that I remember when they came up here and got saved and their lives are never the same. Marriages that, I mean, I counsel with both of them. You know, it's not I hate each other. It's like if we ever come to the church at the same time, you know, we already got World War Three going, so I guess it'd be World War Four. you know. <laughs> um, y'all know what I'm talking about? Yes. Some of those marriages are healed today that would have been impossible. And other people coming up with really rough situations that God has provided brand new, wonderful spouses and friends and, and all kinds of miracles. Amen? Amen? And you played a part in it because you came. Mm -hmm. it's true. I can't tell you, Nancy and all the crew of greeters back here, yeah. how many times I'm told by people that come visit the church, what a beautiful job y'all did yeah. of just loving on them when they came in the door. They felt like there was love here. Lord. Is this okay that I talk about something? Yeah. Because I'm going to change here in just a second. And I'm going to talk about something. Johnny, just to give you a heads up, you might recognize this, okay? Because what I'm going to talk about now has everything to do with walking in grace. But I'm going to jump for the juggler on a different subject. And it's going to get real close and nitty gritty. And it can cause things to hurt in here and it can cause things to cry in here and it can cause things in here to be really really happy okay Rebecca would you get the first slide prepared Johnny sent me a text this week this comes as a as a summary from a book called Wild at Heart and what it has to do with is this man, the revelation that God had given this man about what's important to young men. And this is not the end all of everything. I'm not even quoting you a scripture at this point. But this book changed my life. And hit places inside of me that I thought, oh, if I would have known this, and oh, if the young people of today knew this, who are they going to get it from? Their teachers? Our government? Where are our young people going to find out who they are in Jesus and what He's done from them, if not from us? If not from their fathers, whom this world has targeted to destroy. When was the last time you saw a TV show where any dad was treated in any way other than just a low-life scumbag just or some kind of buffoon? And I'm calling you out today, dads. You'll be up here in a few minutes. You might as well get ready. Every boy needs to know, do I have what it takes. Do your boys know that? Because I can tell you as a boy, I needed to know that. I needed to know whether I had what it takes. Because everything in this world says I don't. Everybody needs to know. Every boy needs to know. I want to be a hero at something. I want to I want to rescue somebody, you know, I want to do something to feel good about myself. Now, we know the answer to that. You'll never do enough things. You got to know Jesus. You got to know that he's the reason. You matter. He's the reason why you're something. You're something because you're a child of God and God loves you. But when you're in the natural, this is what you need. And buddy, you're in the natural. The only thing that's going to fix your heart is Jesus. But you and I have souls. We have flesh. And it's nice to know spiritually you're somebody, but you live in this soulless realm and you want to know that you're something in this flesh part too. But 
You know that it's got to be God. You and I know that it's got to be God. But let's don't fool ourselves. It's not enough to just talk about spiritual things. When you go out there, you want to know, I did something with my life. Can I get an amen from some guy? I want to know that, that there was some purpose for all this mess that I went through, that I did something more than just exist. And the last one is, will I be able to fight for what's important in life? I can't imagine what young men think today. I, I, I can't imagine it. I mean, Tony told me the words to the, the, to the songs that I was singing were bad. They were bad. I think they were mostly dumb. <laughs> the words to the music that go on today, the just gutter filth the way we talk about women the way we talk about men that boys would look up to and girls look up to people who are the embodiment of filth but that's what they grew up with and i'm just making fun what's this the stuff called johnny i want to say buzz um dubstep i feel so sorry for the kids that have been brought up in that I literally thought a wire had been unplugged last night. We were at the FC Dallas game, and now he was doing all these cool video things, and I'm up there just watching, and it sounded to me like somebody took out a live cord, and it was bouncing around, and, <laughs> and then I realized, oh, that's that buzz tip stuff. There's people, can you imagine? I, I think it went, you know, when, when there's, when, when they're 70 years old and they're having their 50th wedding anniversary, let's play our theme song from high school. <laughs> <laughs> and that's nothing compared to the words of the filth. Dads, I'm talking to you. Do your kids know that? Do you, let's talk about your boys for a second. Let's talk about, okay, I'll do it that way. This one will really get you. For those of you, now listen, I'm talking to, and I want you to know this, I'm talking to you as a mature, grown-up Christian that knows Jesus, that knows about grace, and I'm proud of you. Do you understand? That's who I'm talking to. That person I'm talking to, I'm saying this. If your dad that was so screwed up and never did this to you still doesn't know it, have you told him? I have. Dad, you got what it takes. You're a good dad and I'm proud of you. Nobody else ever told him that. Who's going to ever tell him? Somebody's got to. Wow. You mean you can turn it up as well as down? Yes. You sure can. Would you go to the next slide? Every girl asks, now, this is not everything that there is, and everything's not gender specific. Just get something out of this this morning. Every girl asks, am I lovely? Can I be a princess? Am I worth saving? Am I worth somebody fighting for? Now, I don't know that that's what you think. I don't mean it that way. But what I do know is this. I've been around long enough to know that when a guy looks at a girl in you mean everything to me. I'm not talking about sex. I'm not talking about lust. No, I'm talking about you. You are a treasure to me. You may be or are the greatest gift that God's ever put in my life ladies does that make a difference when somebody looks at you like that or maybe i could ask it this way i believe you can you tell me if you believe you can tell in somebody's heart and in their eyes without saying a word that they think that about you see the reason why i think you can is because every last one of you have experienced feeling ashamed or guilty in front of your parents when they looked at you with the eyes of Shame, disappointment, 
And your parent looks at you like that and, and it just confirms everything the devil's ever told you that you're worthless. And, and now your parents have confirmed it too. And so here we are. Just, I might as well go out, do drugs, sleep around, and all that kind of stuff now. What the heck? I'm already all messed up. I might as well confirm it myself. I think the world's doing that a whole lot. I think we dads need to start calling out by grace, calling out yes. what we see in them. Yes. But you've got to see that with the eyes of grace. You've got to see that with Jesus' eyes. Yes. Because what you might see on the outside might stink. Mm -hmm. What's on the outside might be struggling. But what's on the inside? Can you see it? I can. Yes. Man, when I started to see how much he loves me, I'm starting to see that's how much he loves you. And you don't know it. His plan for your life is awesome. But you might not think it is because you've been disappointed and rejected and hurt a lot. But you need somebody to see past all that and say, even though the devil has been awful, Jesus lives in you and he has overcome this world. And the overcomer lives inside of you. And I can see him peeking out. Of you. Can we go to the next slide, please? Until a man knows that he's a man, he will ever, tr forever be trying to prove that he is. What does identity tell you? Quit trying to be something you are. Find out who you are in Jesus and quit trying to be that and find out I am a man. Yes. I'm not trying to be a man. I am a man. My actions haven't all lined up yet. But when you realize you are, you start acting like it. Yes. Until a woman knows that she's truly lovely, she will forever be trying to prove she is. And it never stops. Y'all tell me if this isn't true, but it seems like, you know, an hour goes by, an hour and a half goes by, two hours go by. I'm not quite ready yet. I mean, I took one look and decided not to look, and I was ready. <laughs> Next slide. <laughs> Every father needs to affirm. Y'all know what the word affirm means? Can I use a, a more religious word for you? How about confess? Y'all confess scriptures before? How about you speak them over your children? You speak them over your loved ones. You speak them over your loved ones here. You speak them over your outlaws, I mean in-laws. And, and you say things like, son, you have what it takes. I want you to know I love my dad and I got to actually tell him. And I could tell it freaked him out. Because I don't think he had ever been told that before by anybody. You're not the black sheep. You're my dad. You know, I mean, I have wonderful brothers and sisters today because of you, Dad. I got a great education because of you, Dad. You know, does everybody in here recognize that Dad wasn't perfect? What am I going to call out? What am I going to say to him? Am I going to be the one that's growing up in Jesus, growing up in grace, being healed, blessed, but the moment I get a chance, I'm going to just let everybody else have it because they did hurt me. How about if I get healed and I've gone to church and I found out I'm forgiven, I'm loved, God has a great plan for my life. Why can't I walk in grace towards the hurting world, even the ones that hurt me? It doesn't always feel easy to your flesh. You might not even love hearing a message like this. But I'm talking to dads this morning. You are a man. And you're surrounded by a world and a world's entertainment system that is constantly braiding you by a devil who's constantly telling you you never measure up. That's telling you you don't have what it takes in most areas of life. You only know how to do a couple of things and you might be kind of good at that, but nothing else. That's a lie. You have what it takes to do everything anything that's in front of you whether it's your natural gift or not because whatever is in front of you God is going to be with you you're not doing this without him that's 
So whatever is in front of you, you can do it. He may do 99.99% of it, and that is wonderful. I found out in the last couple years, he will do 100% of it. And I can watch miracles happen just because I believed him. Man, it has been absolutely freaky to think that if I would just believe him and trust him rather than getting in and making sure what I want happens, the miracles that he does. I am operating in a new level today of things that are so far out of my comfort zone. I don't, there, everything inside of me wants to fix this, straighten this, do this, you know. And I'm going to give you a concrete example, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm being very, very open this morning. I hope this will bless you, okay. I haven't always done things right for my son. But the lesson, the lesson I learned recently was so good for me and for him. But I want him to enjoy life. I want him to have a good life. And it was very easy for me to do something, so I just do it for him so he wouldn't have to. And I didn't give him the privilege of learning to do it. So my knee-jerk reaction was, Johnny, it's yours, you go do it. And then I wasn't there for him. And I thought I was doing the right thing. And I'm going to give just a little bit of example. And the only reason I'm talking about it, Johnny, is just simply I want to help them. I just want to tell you what I did. It is so stupid. It is so simple. I'm so ashamed. And yet I'm so happy. <laughs> the only shame is telling y'all I'm how happy on the inside. Johnny's headlight was out. And I thought... I'll have that fixed in 10 minutes. No, that's the time it took to get there and get back. It's about, it doesn't take just a minute to change it. And I thought, I'm not. For once, I'm going to try to be a good dad and not just fix everything for my kid. I said, guess what, Johnny? We're going to the auto store. We got in the car. No, I didn't. I actually said get in the car, and then I told him where we're going. And then <laughs> I went down, <laughs> I went down to, the, to, the, to the auto store, and I said, I'm not talking to them. You are. And he's like, well, I don't, I don't know what to ask for. I don't know all the engine sizes. He doesn't know what they're going to ask. And I looked at him and I went, I know, I don't either. <laughs> really? You know, I don't remember if it was a 2.0 R engine or 2.2. We need to find out. We don't know. Maybe it doesn't matter for this car. I don't know. But I'm, I'm here to help, but I'm not going to do it for you. And Johnny walked up and... Um, and he just did perfect. He said, you know, I've got a 2003 uh, VW Golf. And the guy asked him a question. When he answered the question, we got the light bulb, got it all paid for. He did it all. I was there to help. We came back here. I said, and John, I think, said, are we going to put it in now? And I went, yeah, right now. And uh, But I didn't do it. Popped the hood. Johnny popped the hood. I looked up at the front. And I know there was this thought of, well, how do you take it all apart? I don't know. It can't be that hard. I mean, but I didn't know. But I also didn't figure it out for him. He did it. And he took it all apart, put it all back together, checked it. It all worked. Feel pretty good? It felt good for him. And all of a sudden, I didn't abandon him. And I didn't do it for him. But I was there for him. Gosh, I wish I'd have done that more in my life. Too many times I just did it and said, watch, I'll show you how. And I did it. But we're learning, we're growing, right? Dads, this world needs you and me to be men who can call out, not sin and garbage. You can be dumb and see that. To call out. What God has put in somebody and call it out and draw it out of them and let them see success in them by the reflection that's in your eyes. Amen. Are there any more slides to that? Yes, Ruby. Go ahead. Was there another one? Go ahead. That's all? Okay, I didn't know for sure. (sighs) 
The worst fear of every man is failure. That he, in fact, might not have what it takes. And the worst fear of every woman is abandonment that she might not be loved. And those are just generalizations, but boy, they've been true in my life. I don't think any parent would willingly do this. But a lack of that kind of affirmation can cause a wound in someone's soul. And people with this wound need to ask Jesus into the broken and unhealed place of their hearts. And allow their hearts to forgive and to be healed. It's never too late. It's never too late. I don't care if they're older than you or younger than you. So I'd like for you to do something. We're going to trust God this morning. But if you're male over the age of 29, would you come stand with me up here this morning? If you're male and over the age of 29, would you come up here? Don't, don't face them. Face, face this way. F- face towards the altar because we need Jesus. Would all of you, I'm going to pray up here with, with us, but would you all pray for us right now? Yes. For those of you who know how to pray in the Spirit, would you like to see men be lifted up? Husbands begin to really, really flow with that kind of anointing in their life. Yes. Amen. Come on, man. Let's all together. Okay? Can we do this together? You notice I'm facing this way? Let's all pray together. Father, I thank you that you looked down on Jesus and you said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. I received that this morning for myself, Father. I, re- I believe that you're pleased with me. Because of what Jesus did for me, I no longer am ashamed. I'm no longer a worm. I'm no longer unworthy. Because of you, my heavenly Father, I am a man. I am a man. I'm a man of God. Your strength is in me. Your wisdom is in me. I'm not weak. I'm strong. I'm not afraid. I'm very courageous. And I'm able to do mighty exploits for you. And to change this world. I can walk in your grace. And your wisdom. And love on the unlovely. And bless my world. Now I'm asking all of you guys. I gave that as an example from my heart. Would you out loud to him say those things right now about you yourself? Just ignore everybody else. Would you say it out loud? Thank you. I'll I'll join with you. I thank you, Father. I thank you that you have placed the anointing to be a leader, to be a man, to be a husband, to be a father. I thank you, Father, that you are working in me right now and healing and perfecting all these things inside of me. I call myself a man because you made me a man. It's not because of how I feel or what it looks like or what anybody else thinks. I receive your anointing on my life to be the man who you made me to be. And I will look out at other men and I will call it out of them. And I will look at them and draw from your wellsprings of grace and see men and declare them to be men and rejoice in what you have done. Jesus' name. And I'm asking all of you guys, if you would please, to just split right here and a whole bunch of you stand right here and stand right on this side. We're, we're going to pray for some people in just a minute. No, my, my son woke me up one time and I never realized I was like this. He said, he just asked me a question. I said, Mark, that is a stupid question. He said, Dad, 
if you don't know the answer, it's not a stupid question. Boy, isn't that the truth. If y'all would kind of press over this way, I'm going to use you for just a minute. If you happen to be under the age of 30, would you please come and stand right here? Man or woman, if you're under the age of 30, would you please come now? If you're under the age of 30, if you're not sure, you can ask me. Um, I may or may not know. If that causes anyone heartburn, just come. If you're on your 13th time of 29, come on. <laughs> if you're a young person, come on all, all the way up to the front right here. Really, really close. Come on, close, close. Come on, I, I use deodorant. Come on, come on. <laughs> Even closer, 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 closer. Would all of y'all surround them now? And would all of you ladies pray for us? Um, would would y'all? Good. Uh, we can do this. Guys, if you would, just get with somebody. So, would you get with somebody? Just, just pair up one-on-one. -on -one. I should have made a line, and I didn't do it very well. Okay? Would all of you guys just, just push people away? Somebody use their elbows. This, this, yeah, this just spread out. I didn't do this very well. Just spread out. I'd like, I'd like a man to come here, please. And a man to come here, please. We have, we have enough men. We have enough men. We've, we've got a number right here that needs somebody. Artie, would, would you guys sneak in here? There's a couple right here. Okay, I think, I think we're finally getting there. Now, I'm going to pray in the Spirit. I'd ask all you ladies to pray in the Spirit. I'm asking you men to pray for the person that's in front of you right now, out loud, so they can hear it. And so they can hear what you're calling out in them. Amen. Play some pretty music back there. Ladies, you're watching men be men right now. Pray for them. May I have your attention for just a moment, please? If you have someone right in front of you, I want to know who's, who's, who are you praying for? Put your hand on them. Who are you praying for? Put your hand on them. I want to make sure everybody, everybody's here. Is every, Joe, you got somebody on you praying for you too? The, the man in the white shirt right there. Sir. There you go. Now, I want you to begin to declare things over their life. And I want you to tell them who they are and what kind of life they're going to have. By faith. Speak it out right now. Let God show you what to say. Let Him speak over their lives right now. Listen to what they're saying. Listen to the person praying for you.
Amen. As you finish up, I'd like for all of the men, I'd like for all of the men to go stand way far on the sides again, like you did just a moment ago. I need all of, all of the men, if you would, please go stand to the side, just like you did a moment ago. And I'd like for all the ladies sitting down to now come up and pray for these same young people, just the way the men were doing just now. Um, would y'all spread out a little bit and make it a little bit easier for them? You know, spread out, Brandon. If you could move down just to here. For everyone that's a young person, you can you can face them or whatever. Ladies, grab somebody. My son's over here. He needs somebody. <laughs> this would be the message he'll never forget. I talked about him so much. Every, grab somebody. There, you you need someone to pray. Everybody. You need to be praying for somebody. If you don't have someone, grab someone. There's two kids right here and one adult praying. We've got, we've got plenty of adults. Y'all come on in. If y'all could move over a little bit so Miss Edie and some others can, can get through here. Come on up. D, D, you can come around this way. Okay, we're going to begin by praying for them. Just just praying for them. We'll speak over them a minute. Just pray for them right now. Just Just pray for them. And if you begin transitioning to just declaring things over their life. Ladies, you might not realize it, but the men are all behind you now. And they're going to be praying over you as well. Let's pray for one another. I see life, grace, vision, new health, new strength. Let God's love and His grace flow through you right now. Let Him do it. Let Him do it. You be a conduit to Him. Stretch out. Call out. Tell them they're loved. Tell them they got what it takes. Tell them they're worth fighting for.
worship you almighty god there is none like you do you see jesus in him tell him i you're looking at a man of god you. you're looking at a woman of god oh prince of beautiful peace got what it takes that is what i long they're worth fighting to for do. I they got what it takes to win and success because Jesus is in their lives. For you are You're my the head, not the tail. You're the righteousness of Jesus, man of God. I worship you, you oh my you guys are great God. Not yet. The there hope. is none like you. Worship you. I worship you, Almighty God. Would all of y'all now, young people, there is none y'all have a powerful anointing on you. Start praying for the adults that are around you. Start praying for the adults that are around you. Tommy, you can do it. Grab somebody. Start praying for them. Tell them they're a good mom. Tell them they're a good dad. That is what I long to do. I give you praise for you are my righteousness. I worship you, O mighty God. You pray for there me. is none okay. like you. Of you, O mighty God, there is none like you. I worship you, sing with us, O Prince of Peace. That is what I long to do. I give you praise for you are my righteousness. I worship you. Almighty God, there is none like you. I worship you, Almighty God, there is none like you. I worship you, O Prince of Peace. That is what I long to do. I give you praise, for you are my righteousness. Jesus.
Jesus lives in you this morning, you've got what it takes. Amen? You've got what it takes. Say that with me. I've got what it takes. I've got Jesus. He lives inside of me. And he's more than enough. Amen? Father, I thank you for a beautiful morning this morning. I thank you as we go out. We'll go out with great joy and great peace. For the greater one lives inside of us. And he has identified who we are in him. His children. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Love you all so much. You're blessed. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. Love you all.